It's, uh, it's a little bit after 6.30. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I see a lot of faces that I often see and I also see a lot of new faces. And let me welcome everyone. Um, the KM Institute has uh, chapters around the world. This is a DC chapter for the KM Institute. We're very proud of, of our chapter. Many folks I think that are here that are graduates of the KM Institute like myself if you, I know we have some folks that are currently going. If you've already gone, uh, raise your hand. I think there's a few folks besides me who have and they might be out. And then I would also like to recognize, I know we have a large uh, class currently and some folks here. If you all could raise your hands uh, quickly as well. We thank uh, all of you for coming. We welcome uh, new faces and new perspectives and that's what keeps this whole profession fresh. So thank you all for coming. Of course, want to thank uh, PPC for allowing us, uh, Zach, uh, facilitating the, the, the hosting here. This is a wonderful, wonderful facility. And I think that you'll find this is a, a very good number of folks to generate a lot of buzz. And as it says here, um, the objectives is networking and learning. And we do that on the buzz by buzz sessions. And I won't go into detail about all the different you know, we're getting ready to kick off the new season of uh, chapter meetings, and that really entails getting together and exchanging ideas. So if you have something that, that you're working on in the current organization you are, and it doesn't have to be titled KM, uh, you know, if you have something that you're working on and you think that it provides value that folks can learn from, we're interested in getting that from you. I'm going to introduce... Uh, and uh, Robert, you can come up here, please. Uh, he's going to talk about idea generations. Uh, Rob, as you can see, Washington Speaker Bureau, so he's, he's very well versed in, in uh, speaking. And uh, so he'll be right on target. We set the bar high. With that eight minute presentation uh, we all have. Okay, so first of all, I am not a speaker. I work for the Speaker's Bureau, <laughs> so the expectation needs to come right down. Um, but today I'm going to talk about, uh, so first of all, WSB um, does provide speakers to organizations. Um, we essentially provide inspiration from the world's greatest minds. That's our tagline. So uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit about idea management in, in general, but I'll also uh, mention as part of that how WSB thinks about those kinds of things. So this up here um, is, uh, uh, for some of you have seen before, uh, a tag cloud. Um, and this is essentially a, a visual representation of some of the things that, that are going to be talked about. Um, in this quick session, and hopefully that you'll buzz about afterwards. Oh, and I've got a little clicker over here, right? Okay, so idea generation. How is it? How has it taken place in companies um, in, throughout history? Uh, often top down, right? CEO's got an idea of which way he wants to take the company. Senior manager, whoever. This is what we're going to do, and we're doing it. And. You know, it's usually high paid people, they're experienced, they've got good ideas, but the question is, do they have all the ideas? Um, and, you know, hopefully in your discussions, you can talk about, is there anything, is that necessarily the best way to accomplish things, to always have top down idea generation? So along came Web 1.0, and um, people said, oh, this is great, we can have uh, tools. Uh, that we can use, and uh, you could have client server even before that, but web based tools really kind of helped with that. And so we can have web based tools, and then, yes, we can have this whole uh, idea generation, and we'll track the ideas, and we'll do this, and, and it became this huge sort of product based thing, and, and a massive process oriented. And there were companies that existed like that for a long time, and they sold that product. I don't think any of them took off very well, but, um, but it exists. And, uh, and, the, and the problem is, though, that they haven't caught on like wildfire. And there are reasons for that is because it's still, it's still kept within a small group of people. Even though it may not be the very top people, you're putting out this idea tool maybe to a small subset of your company. And so you're still not getting to the subtitle of this talk was democratizing business. You're still not getting to that ideal of learning what everybody in the organization thinks and, and taking that into account when you're making corporate decisions. So as many of you know, 
um, there's this concept called Web 2.0 that came along. And if you don't know, this is kind of a, a visual summary of some of the differences. The problem with Web 2.0 is that everybody has a different definition for it. I guess it's kind of like KM, right? Everybody's got a different definition for it. Um, but the, the version that I w I'm going to talk about today is Web 2.0 came along with sort of lighter weight, um, simpler products. Um, things that were, because they were so simple, they could be blended together to form better things that were, that were needed by your organization. So um, many of you have seen um, mashups, what are called mashups with Google Maps where all of a sudden on Google Maps you can find out the real estate that's available. Uh, you know, through, I forget the site, but I think Zillow or so, so, yeah, is one of them. Um, where all of a sudden you can, you can find in your neighborhood what, what's for sale and things like that. Or even the history of what things have sold. And that's Google providing part of that and somebody else building on top of that. Those are two smaller applications that plug together to provide, um, to provide something that neither one of them provided by itself. OK, so these idea generation tools exist now. They're lighter weight. They have web-based tools to be able to reach out further into your organization and find out what people think and, and, and essentially get their, their qualitative input and their quantitative input. And so if you look up here, this is a, a, a print. This is just a screen print from a company called User Voice that's doing this. Um, and you can see here the summary of, of, of how they're um, suggesting that you use their, their product. You can vote on ideas that are already out there. You can start to see a consensus emerging. There's 129 versus 124 for that. You can have a richer conversation around that idea. Um, many of you have been on forums. It's kind of like, imagine a forum, uh, but it's attached to an idea with, with a whole sort of rating and voting structure. Um, so you can have that. And on the one that WSB, on the, on, on the tool that we use, you can even rate the comments. So you, some of you have seen on Amazon and, and things like that, you want, you, know, you want the really highly rated comments to come up first because that's going to be the most valuable to you. So um, you, know, you, you could potentially get yourself into, a, into kind of a loop there <laughs> where, where you're rating the rating of the rating. But, um, but it works really well. And so then at the end of it, well, OK, great. What are you going to do about it? Now, the tools that I'm showing you today, this is where they aren't as strong. Okay? You've, still got the, you've still got the task at hand of, OK, now we've got a lot of good data. What are we going to do about it? And that's a huge process and change management and strategy and all those kinds of things problem that these tools are not going to solve. But they are solving a pretty, pretty big issue of how do we find out what we don't know? And our people in our organization do know. Or, so let's talk about it. How, you know, how can it be used? Is it our people in our organization? What do they know? Do the sales guys know something that the head, that the CEO doesn't know? Probably. They talk to the customers every day. Do your customers know something that you don't know? Yes, they definitely do. Well, they know what they want, and you don't necessarily know what they want. So that's you know, a great use for this kind of tool. Um, and then what about the general population? What about anybody who comes to your internet site? Prospects. They might tell you what they, what they would buy from you if you had it. So all these, all these ways of using this kind of a tool are being implemented today in various ways.